Joining us now on the phone is Mark Gurman. He uh, broke the scoop. He breaks all the Apple scoops. He is deep inside uh, the Apple psychology. Uh, walk us through sort of the importance of this uh, for investors when it comes to Apple. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. If Apple retail stores continue to unionize and you see a majority of stores unionize, uh, you can see pricing pressure there as Apple would have to probably hike pay and some benefits and such. Maybe there becomes a point where they open fewer retail stores where they begin to close retail stores. Unions is just simply something that Apple does not want to deal with. They're a very controlling company in every facet from product development to how they manage the rollout of products to how they manage their employees and customers and customer service and such. So this is absolutely just, you know, picking a fight within, you know, the way Apple typically likes to operate. So they're not they're not thrilled about it. Uh, this has died down over the last year or so. Like you both said, it felt like you weren't hearing anything about new stores unionizing. Uh, to date, there are five retail stores in the U.S. that we know about that have petitioned to unionize. Of the five, only the stores uh, in Oklahoma City and the one in Towson, Maryland, have successfully unionized. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the thing you should note there is that those stores, despite being unionized, they haven't gotten any special privileges or special pay or reached any real collective bargaining agreements with Apple. So it's still nascent. Apple hasn't really moved an inch there. We'll, we'll see what happens uh, as NLRB complaints and, and different lawsuits continue to emerge on the topic.